Welcome back, movie lovers, to the ZMM Show as I want to start talking to you all about the processes and the things that I've learned about making a zombie film over the last four to five years. So we have a Dead Nightmare series out there, and there has been so much research that I've done over time to learning how to do the audio, the video work, um, trying to set up the shots, you know, the special effects, understanding uh, scripts and screenplays, and trying to get a story together, a cohesive story, and everything else above and beyond that. And so that is what this uh, segment of my show is going to be about. Uh, in case any of you have aspirations to one day filming, or maybe you have some people you know who are trying to get into it, maybe you could share this with them. That would be awesome, because there is a lot of information that I'd like to provide you that will really help you through that process and start eliminating things and understand, okay, I have X amount of money to spend. This is where I need to focus, or this is where I want to focus you know, my, my money and my efforts. So with that said, the first part of this segment is going to talk about um, what I believe to be is getting your story or your kind of screenplay together. So I'd say before you go out, before you go spend a bunch of money on a new camera, audio equipment, and everything else under the sun that you're going to have to put this thing together, first try to come up with a decent story. And it doesn't have to be that complex. And in fact, I would highly recommend it not be. Uh, I think some great ideas are sometimes just start from the most simplest concepts. Okay. For instance, when I started Dead Nightmare, I mean, it was a pretty simple deal. It was uh, two loved ones and them battling through the night uh, as the zombie apocalypse unfolds and breaks into their household uh, and what they do to survive, pretty much. And that simple idea has now turned into where we have now, I think, eight or nine survivors now. and t So two separate groups, and they're moving along. So again, these ideas can build and build and build because as, you, as time goes on and it gets successful, you're going to want to get more ambitious. But I... I caution how ambitious you want to get because these projects can turn into an absolute nightmare. And again, this is a total side thing that I do. It is not my job, um, which again is why our, our acting talent, a lot of them are amateurs because I don't have the money to pay for actual talent. But these guys give it 110%. They really do. And I appreciate that. And so with that said, make sure you get that story together. And so... As you're building the story, you may understand about script and screenplay. Okay, sometimes the words are actually used synonymously, but the screenplay is actually used more around when we think of film, when we think about what's going to be on the movie screen, things like such. Uh, scripts are actually um, can be known as make like radio programs, uh, stage plays, even video games. But again, the words can be used synonymously, so just kind of prepare yourself and when you're talking about it. Important thing is you need to uh, narrow your focus and get some idea, get some characters, and start building this story of what you're trying to get across uh, to your audience. And pay attention to the details, okay? Nothing else I've ever found pisses people off more is when your story is not cohesive and isn't isn't following a direction and going somewhere, okay? Now, in Dead Nightmare and what we did, to change things up a bit, ours is a non-linear story. It jumps around, okay? And so you need to pay attention and watch the characters and what's happening with them to understand the story. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like that mystery in a way that the the people, or excuse me, the viewers, get to try and figure out what the story is all about. And that's part of the, the ride. It's part of the excitement. Uh, to those who aren't able to follow it, they may not get the enjoyment out of it. And we may lose that audience member. And that's that happens, right? So it all depends on what you're trying to do. But uh, continuity is a huge piece, okay? So when you are jumping around in time, or even if you're just going from scene to scene, it needs to make sense and it needs to flow, okay? Uh, when you're filming, it's not that you have to hit every single segment. I mean, watch any 80s film. I mean, they move from scene to scene, place to place, and sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it. And I happen to be a big fan of 80s films in general. I think it's sparked, like, all of our great creativity was done around that 80s time period. And that's why we continue to repeat and repeat uh, sequels and movies and read uh, the redoings of them all. It's, it's ridiculous. But... I happen to really love 80s style films and I think someone actually told me, man, get out of the 80s and uh, you know start filming more. I'm like, no, I don't think I'm going to. I, I really like that style and, and that's that's me. That's what my style brings. And um, Another thing too, when it comes to zombies and stories in general, it's all been done. Okay, so if you think you're going to come out the gate and come up with some super creative brand new idea, guys... 
There have been stories and books and shows between The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead. There are movies that are coming out. They have another series coming out with uh, some young kids, and I think they're surviving further into the apocalypse. I mean, you name it, the situation's been done. However, it doesn't mean that you can't take that and make it make something your own story, your own characters. Make it unique to what you're trying to achieve. We have something that I built into our series where actually a small percentage of the population turned, a very small in fact, turned into something called a stalker zombie. And they basically latch on to a crew of people, survivors, killing them off one by one, almost predator-ish style, and until they're pretty much all gone. And it's, I just thought it was a very interesting concept, uh, a zombie that can somewhat think and still have some bit of feeling, but yet is still that predator style, and nothing, it won't let anything get in its way. Other zombies, they'll kill them off. People, it'll, you'll kill them or wound them so they can bring in the others, and then anyways, it, that's what I brought in that was kind of unique. Now, it took a little while for us to get to that point in time, but, you know, if someone wants to yell at you and say, you're copying Walking Dead, or this or that, it's like, no, no you're probably not, okay? You just have your own story. I mean, in all technicality, uh, Walking Dead is copying off of George Romero and all his original works, okay? But no, the, the walk, AMC's Walking Dead and everything is basically taking the zombie concept and it's kind of turned into their own little survival soap opera, right? And and no one can yell at them for copying George's stuff or anything else. It's it's their story. It's it's theirs. And so just like the same as when you make your story, I mean, obviously don't copy the characters' names or make characters just like Michonne and Rick and that, but make your own characters. Make them unique and... Um, and then make them do some crazy, stupid stuff because that's what people do in films. And that's that's what brings the drama. If, if they did everything right and normal, nobody would come out to watch your show, okay? It just wouldn't be interesting. So they need to do stupid things along the way. And maybe it's not so much stupid things. I shouldn't say that. But it's like things that maybe weren't the smartest decision at the time, right? And let's face it, when you're faced in those those really perilous situations and you don't know what to do, you're going to mess up. And that's just what it comes down to. Nobody makes the right decision every single time. Sooner or later, you're going to fail. So with that said, is um, for my first part of this uh, the series is basically talking about this story and script. Make sure you get that together. The future episodes that are going to follow this are going to start talking about the camera equipment you're going to need, uh, audio equipment and some different options you can do, the programs you can use to try and edit all this uh, wonderful stuff so once you get it uh, the memory cards you're going to need it there's uh, so much information guys so i hope you come back to tune back into the show and give a like and subscribe if you do it enjoy this i think you're going to enjoy some of the stuff along the way i'm also going to be showing a lot of the prosthetics and things we've used over time who i've bought from who i hope to plan on buying from in the future and yeah everything else so with that said this is mike with the zmm show and i hope to see you guys at the next part of me how to make a zombie film See you guys.